Hello, everybody. This is Professor Bob Rock, uh, sending you warm greetings from Prague. I'm currently at uh, one of the private universities, a very avant-garde university of managerial informatics, uh, close to Prague Center. Excuse me. I just got a call. Thank you. Um, given the subject of the panel discussion on what's beyond the internet, I felt um, perhaps in 5, 10, 15 years from now, I believe you colleagues who are currently sitting in, in, in Pune and enjoying wonderful settings of the conference, symposium, and, and weather, we had a, quite a snowy and a lot of snow in Prague. Now, I just want to say, first of all, thank you to ITU, thank you to colleagues organizing the Kaleidoscope for having me uh, contributing to the panel. I would like to say that uh, giving the first contact, what's beyond the internet, I was very enticed. And during my work in Fiji and also Kizuna panel in Tokyo, I realized that the, the region, Pacific region, is such enormous, large geographical location. And giving as well as India and Asia, so you are kind of connecting to, say, you go west towards Europe and you go east towards Asia, and of course coming to Canada. I believe that the technology, we haven't seen nothing of it yet. Um, you see the efforts uh, from Cambridge Lab, uh, next generation networks, we're talking about IPv6, we talk about uh, satellite network combinations of a wireless fiber optic and wired networks. And of course, we all agree that we definitely all struggle with bandwidth, security. And there's another dimension, which is, I would say, what's coming after, such as a new killer application. Eventually, that application will bring whole internet down. Now, you would agree that if you look at the current infrastructure, basic principles, uh, I must give a credit to Professor Serf, Dr. Serf, uh, Professor Kleinrock, and people, I mean, brilliant minds in, in the UK, starting perhaps, you know, years back to Babbage, that the computerization and internet as such has become a reality. There's nothing that happens without internet. I can't imagine any business, any enterprise, any commerce, any hospital, any <coughs> eventually government office without an internet. Now, the expectations are becoming more and more uh, increasing, and yet we take internet for granted. Now, the question that we could ask ourselves is, what are the directions that technology, as such as infrastructures, topologies, and presentation itself, the computer human interface, what are the dimensions that we're heading? If you look at miniaturization, is bringing out to certain level. Uh, in my case, just the concept of being in Prague and presenting the lecture remotely, hopefully the video recording that we do with colleagues right here in Prague will be transferred to Pune, and you will be watching my lecture live. I also hope that we parallel, side by side with my lecture, that we will be able to set up a Skype connection, so I could also, in addition, yet again, perhaps repeat the same lecture, but in real time. Now, the connectivity with regards to having access to internet is not granted to everyone. And we know very well that regions such as South Pacific are struggling with bandwidth. There are campuses, there are islands that are actually surviving thanks to very modest bandwidth, which is available via satellite connection. Now yet, some parts in Europe, even in UK, as it seems so obvious that we have high bandwidth, but not every village, not yet every corner has access. Same in Canada, I am Canadian. I give you an example, east coast towards Quebec. There are some, you know, issues, even some places in the region of Ottawa that do not have a internet access. So I think there's a lot of things to be done yet. Now, what's beyond the internet? If you say five years from now, I believe the cyber space and cyber automation is becoming reality. If you look at the efforts in cyber clothing and, you know, a computerized shirt, computerized ties, computerized environment, uh, aut fully automated house, I think uh, we are just at the beginning of discovering new generation of technologies that 
will become completely invisible, completely pervasive with regards to the way how we live. I think if you look at yet someone in, say, telemedicine, when people with medical condition need a regular checkup, regular diagnosis, even medical administrations, and yet analysis. So I think these technologies, some applications, may seem to be far-fetched as far as too expensive, but yet, as black and white TV, as transistor, as Ethernet, they will become eventually more and more accessible. The large effort and large progress will be made in human computer interface. I believe what we have, monitor, keyboard, and the box, is a very old concept which have not changed. Now, my question is, could I possibly have a next generation, I'm looking for a handkerchief or something in my pocket, something that could actually, from my pocket, I just open a large screen. Apart from having perhaps holographic imaging, and we know that Cisco is working on three-dimensional video conference facilities. Now, could we have something that I could have an info box as myself? I, I do a lot of travel, I have a lot of meetings, a lot of decisions, and I need agenda, and I forget things. As a human, we all forget. So, apart from just having a mobile device and organizers and simple phones or very complex iPhones, and etc., we could also think about a new type of technologies that could actually, first of all, with regards to storage, store thousand more times information, having a technology that could actually become more user-friendly. You would all agree that complexity adds to computation, and computation adds to delays, and that basically brings the quality of service much down. In addition, security. I believe the next generation of challenges with regards to state security, institutional security, Etc., etc., cybersecurity in general is becoming a very, very challenging indeed for everybody. Now, with regards to education, I believe that we need to focus and prepare next generations of engineers and scientists and researchers working in IT to the concept where they will be able to go beyond what's ordinary in the textbook. And so I think that vision should become a part of culture for next generation of engineers, for current engineers and researchers. Also, delegation of research activities should not only sit or be located in central few, etc., locations, but eventually it will become almost omnipresent. As we have internet, I think also intelligence and collecting of data should become basically distributed all over the planet. As you know, we all agree, a genius may be born in the middle of Solomon Islands or Tuvalu or, I don't know, small Cook Islands, somewhere in the middle of Pacific, as well as directly from Boston, Cambridge, Prague, etc., Moscow, etc. So once ago, I hope this a very short and very brief contribution entices yet further discussions, and perhaps I look very much forward to hear my colleagues, honorable colleagues, their contributions and look forward to discuss perhaps and even I would like to extend that very first contact to a promoting collaborative links. Let us work together. Let's find out if we could actually think about creating centers of research, excellence, thinking, etc. So we could actually work all on that, <coughs> what's beyond the internet. You know, Jules Verne wrote that novel or say a book about the submarine. Now, I say we have Ethernet age, but what's beyond the Ethernet age? I begin to live in this society where we take, you know, voice command for anything almost granted, that things happen automatically, yet one fantastic in case of emergencies, but also it could be a huge disaster if it's unproperly used and utilized. So I think, yet again, quality of service is going to be remaining challenge. Security, number one. In addition, sustainability and reliability, technology that actually contributes to the betterment of mankind and put in no way any, in any, any form and shape a humans in jeopardy and danger. Thank you very much. I look forward to your questions and be most delighted either to answer you directly or if we could extend communication via email. My email address and details are with colleagues organizing the, 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 the workshop. Thank you very much. And 
Yet again, I'm looking forward to your questions, communications, emails, and hopefully working with you so we could take a first step to that next generation, what's beyond. But 